Hello everybody, I'm Roadblock. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Uh, as you can see, I'm currently on the, the main account. We're going to be talking about, about both accounts right now. Um, but mostly we're going to be talking about the Fusion. We're going to be talking about the uh, current Summon Pool event. And um, a request that I've already had. I am streaming right now, but I've already had a request to uh, talk about Epics for the tournament, for the Spider tournament. So... Let's kind of take a look at uh, a couple of different things here and, you know, see what options we have. First thing that I want to do is update progress. Now, I'm not as far as I should be, but not in a bad way. I have completed all of the stuff uh, at the time that I'm supposed to. So I have 40 on both accounts. Now, the only things that I currently have left to do are the ones that expire, I think, today. So, I've got the Artifact Enhancement event. Did I miss? I may have missed something else. That's not what I want. Where's my calendar? Where's my schedule? And the Fire Knight Tournament. Yes. Okay. So, looking at the schedule right now, we've got five from the Ice Golem. We've got five from Classic Arena. We did 15 from Summon Rush, 10 from Champion Training, five from the Dungeon Divers. Right, so we've got 25, 30, 5, 40. That's 40. I still have to do the finish the Fire Knight tournament and the artifact enhancement event. Now, the Fire Knight tournament, I do believe, ends today. Oh no, one day, 21 hours. So there is a bit of overlap. Um, Yes, there is. I can see it now. Sorry, I look looking at the schedule. I, I didn't see it a second ago. So Dungeon Divers 2 does overlap with this Fire Knight. But to be honest, uh with with the spider tournament that kind of helps actually with the Dungeon Divers event. Now, just a reminder, because we did the champion training event, we are up uh 10 points. We have 10 points that we can miss, right? Or 10 fragments that we can miss. Now, my original plan was to miss the second dungeon divers event but i didn't know that we were going to get this spider event in the middle of it so that actually makes it a little bit easier because i could do this spider event i can finish out fire night and do this spider event and get the dungeon divers points that i'm looking for that way plus we start champion training on wednesday that's going to overlap a little bit as well champion training was probably the roughest thing for me on the free to play on the main account it's so easy and it's so frustrating how easy it is but that why is it so easy on the main account one i do have the raid card on the main account and two on the main account um i i i level a lot of epics as food yes there's duplicates out there but there are still bad epics right uh so it's really easy to make a decision on some of those bad epic and epics and say okay yeah you're gonna be food um, I don't really care about a duplicate of you. I'm not going to use you even if I did have duplicates. So maybe there's some champions in Centranos that I'm sleeping on, but to be honest, Centranos isn't my favorite area of progression. So I'm not too worried about that on my main account. Uh, back over on the free to play, things are going very well. As far as current progression in the Fire Knight tournament, uh, we are pretty progressed, so we're looking good there. Now, I do need to be careful about my energy spending. I need to make sure that I still get up here before I worry about this spider event too much. So my I've tested a few teams today, but my energy and gems will go towards Fire Knight. We are spending quite a few gems. I don't have as much of an energy stockpile as I've had in the past. A uh, big part of that is uh, a, a lot to do with um, a lot of events and stuff that we've been participating in, right? We've been doing Sand Devil tournaments. We've been doing these epic tournaments. So I, was a, I didn't have as much saved up um, bottles of energy and stuff like that, despite not doing the most recent fusion. Good news, though, I have plenty of gems. Uh, we're very, very good in the gem department, and I have room to, can't, to to skip stuff if need be as well, right? If uh, if I get... If, if this Dungeon Divers proves to be too much, I can skip it. Um, I do have a good bit of passive energy gain of, that I can use. We still have our daily quests. 
um, weekly reset when that comes up. We've got uh, monthly is a ways away. So I'm not really going to get any monthly energy anytime soon. But we also have our advanced quests, although I don't know. I don't. I personally am kind of lazy on my advanced quests. To, uh, that's not exactly the most efficient way to survive, but I, I, I do tend to to do that. So, um, you know, it is what it is. I'm not perfect, so. But everything else is right on track, so we're really happy about all of that. Now, let's talk about the fun stuff going on. Uh, I've already kind of mentioned it briefly a little bit, but we do have this summon pool going on right now. This summon pool is amazing. So, most of these epics, I would absolutely love either one copy or duplicates on, well, uh, duplicates in terms of like plus wanting a champion. So, I would not be mad if I got almost any of these epics. Not really interested in Ulfrig now, uh, since we've already got a copy of him for the, for the Mikage fusion. But everything else here is top tier. I certainly could see them being used for Centrano. Certainly see them being plussed for other content. Obviously, we know how Ugo is. Ugo is going to be my next six star. I got her all the way up to five star. And her food is actually ready to go. Um, but I'm, I don't need to use that yet until Wednesday when the champion training tournament starts. So we're going to, I'm being patient. As far as that, but I did manage to level up all of her food. That's how I got all my points for the champion training event. So Ugo is ready to get leveled. And uh, once she does, that's obviously going to be a big impact on my Hydra team. For the opportunity to, to increase her efficiency via Faction Guardians or plus one her is uh, very exciting. Same thing with Deacon, right? That's going to be Faction Guardians. If it's not already full. Yeah, so Sacred Order is already full. So a duplicate Deacon is an instant plus one of one of my most used epics. So um, duplicate Ugo, I would put in uh, the Faction Guardians. So really, really good epics. But these legendaries, wow. First of all, Kaimar. My most wanted legendary on my main account. And I mean... I'm not gonna, I wouldn't say most wanted, but he's definitely uh, like way up at the top of the list on the free to play. Uh, if I was to get Kaimar, that would change things dramatically on the free to play uh, as far as speed goes and, and having that reset champion period. But even if not Kaimar, I mean, I know Glacid is really good for Hydra, but. Ancora and uh, Padrig are in here. These are two of my favorite champions right now. I absolutely love them both. I love them paired together. I like Padrig as an ally attacker, but he has a chance to decrease cooldowns with the A1. Ancora also has a chance to decrease cooldowns on the A1, which I think is really strong. Uh, we also get a cleanse with the shield and strengthen. Um, very similar to... Um, What's her face that we just got? Um, Mithrala. But she also has a revive in her kit. Also, speed in all battles. So she's actually my lead for Hydra. And then I like to run Padrick with her. We're constantly cleansing. We're constantly ally or uh, ally attacking and, and resetting cooldowns of everybody of different abilities. And, and with all that ally attacking. They get a lot of cooldown resets off. So I'm a big fan of this combo. The Duchess is amazing for anywhere in the game. PvE, PvP. She has a huge passive that reduces damage done. A full team revive with Veil. With block... Uh, sorry, full team revive with Veil. She brings perfect Veil and block buffs. Um, yeah, just really, really... Uh, not perfect Veil. Sorry, it's just Veil. But still. Solid, solid champion. Um, I don't know that much about Morrigan. I know that I run into her quite a bit in Arena, and she really pisses me off. So uh, that's all I have to say about her. <laughs> uh, love, Mik love Lady Kimmy, and Theodore is, you know, I think most of us know what Theodore can do. Really, really good solo champion anywhere in the game for the most part. So 
This is a stacked roster. That is why I will be going for both of the events, even though it's a very difficult time to go for both of the events, given the fusion going on. It's a really, really good, like, it, it actually kind of times just right for the fusion. We're in a bit of a lull for the fusion. Once you finish up Fire Knight and do your artifact enhancement event, um, we're going to be in a real lull for a day or two. Go ahead and just use your passive energy gain to knock out the, um, the spider. But what champions should you be using for spider if you're doing uh, epics only? Well, there's a lot of great options. Now, I have on the uh, free-to-play, I've got one, one team. And on the main account, I've got one team. Now, these champions are not regularly used on my account. I am doing stage 20. This is just mostly for convenience sake. On this account, I'm probably not going to keep any of the uh, accessories that I get. Um, but this is the team that I'm going with. Now, I've got Rector Draft for healing. I've got Cryodan for freezing the spiders. Royal Guard, who does enemy max HP damage to help speed up the killing of the boss. I've got Doom Priest for cleanse and a little bit of extra healing. And Mordecai is really bringing most of the damage. So, the, you know what? I'll, uh, I can keep it on Super Raid, so I'll go ahead and do that. So, I'll show you. It's not going to be an especially fast team, but you'll kind of see, get an idea of how it works here. So, I do freeze the spiders. You don't have to do that. That's just something that I like to do. There's other versions of control you can do. Um, you'll see on my main account, I actually bring an ally protector to keep everybody alive because I don't have uh, as many stats on that account. But here you'll see um, what we're really doing. We're putting the HP burn on the spiders and every time a spider takes a turn, we're just doing that little bit of damage, right? But that's why freezing is so interesting in this, right? Because they're still taking a turn and they're still ticking the HP burn but they don't actually attack me, so I don't take a lot of damage. That's why I really like freezing. Now, other options here would be stun. Um, other options would be um, like a provoker, and, and you, you pick who gets hit by the spiderlings, right? But most of that damage did come from Mordecai. Now, because I don't have as much turn meter control, I'm not really able to keep the spider from taking a turn so the spider does heal up a little bit but i'm not looking for a perfect team here i'm just looking for one that works and i feel like most of us are doing the same thing this isn't supposed to be our permanent team this isn't our min our min max speed tuned everybody does everything in the perfect order you know i've got champions that are that are are picked for other content in the game Cryodan is for, for Fire Knight Hard, so he has speeds that he needs to hit, right? And there you go. That's the team. So that was a minute 41. Not too far off my best. Granted, I haven't used a real team on stage 20 in a long time. So, um, But that is one example of a team that you can do. Now, you'll see Mordecai is doing 7 million, Royal Guard doing 3 million. Now, Royal Guard is not built very well on this team. If you have him, I recommend using him. He does bring turn meter control. He also brings enemy... I think he brings turn meter control. I could be wrong about that. But he also... I know for a fact he brings enemy max HP damage. So that'll speed your run up a bit. But even if you don't have a Royal Guard or, or a lot of those champions that I just listed, or even a fully leveled Mordecai, I want you guys to check this team out. My Mordecai is level 50. Now, I will admit that I had to build him a little strange. Uh, I had to build, I had to find my maximum accuracy piece in every one of these. Um, these sets being completed have nothing to do with wanting the sets. It's literally because they actually gave me the most accuracy on my account, period, for the slot. Uh, because I don't have access to a banner. He's only level 50, and I'm not doing any masteries. This is a very basic Mordecai. But let me show you how the team works here. Uh, I'm going to take it off Super Raid so we can do a run. 
Um, and you're going to see here that, that it's the same thing you just saw that Mordecai does a lot. I do bring an ally protector here. This is, I mean, that is a very stacked Taragi. That's a lot of HP. You can clearly see that. So we are taking some poisons, right? Um, but you'll notice he's not taking any damage directly from the spiders. It's all poison damage that Mordecai is taking. And the spiders, because of the provoke, are attacking Taragi, which is working out really well for me. I do also have Skull Crusher, who I think would work pretty well here. The one downside I have with Skull Crusher is it's going to make the run take so much longer because of all those counterattacks. Um, let's talk about the rest of the team. So a lot of those HP burns coming out, that is from, as we know, Mordecai, right? We've already talked about what he brings to this team. But we also have Geomancer in this team as well. Now, Geomancer does do the reflect damage back onto whoever his HP um, burn is targeting. Now, he puts his burn on the main boss, which also manipulates turn meter. So that does speed things up a little bit. Um, Deacon is in the team for a little bit of turn meter control and speed or a lead. So you'll see the spider gets a turn. So she does heal up a little bit there, but not that much. So we're okay. Uh, just causes the run to take a little bit longer. I've got Ursula in there for revives and for decreased attack, as well as uh, increased defense and strengthen to keep people alive. And you'll see like that, those big ticks there, while they're not under burn, they're still doing Geomancers stuff i at least i assumed that i could be wrong because they didn't do it that time so there was a big one there uh, is it a percentage chance it's probably um so one thing that i would recommend and there's a there's actually a question of this in uh the chat kind of and what they're asking about is like, like, what is the best stage to farm? My recommendation, if you're looking for the best stage to farm, is to take a look at where you get the most points per energy used. And what I mean by that is I got 21 points on 16 energy with this team. I'm very happy with that result. I'm going to keep farming at stage 20. Is it possible that I could do stage 15, 13, even 10? and get more points it's absolutely possible i have seen that before um if we look at the tournament now i'm not saying that it will happen but i when when the fire knight tournaments were a thing uh for these i would do the fire knight tournaments and i would farm at like stage six but i was doing it so fast that i gained a large amount of points this is not a speed tournament is it no it's not <laughs> all right never mind it's not a uh turn uh a turn based one it is a straight up gear one that really just blew my mind so yeah i would farm stage 20 you're gonna get more points per energy at stage 20 um if you're struggling you can do it i i want to say 16 or 13 i think is the one there's one where you get a big, uh, yeah, 13, I think. You actually get a really large, you get a more six-star pieces. So you might be hitting a larger percentage of points there uh, if you're farming, if you can't farm stage 20 with an all-epic team. Um, but now, should I try these epic teams in, in Spider Hard? I should try them. But I, it feels like a little bit of a waste of energy because I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Um, that's just me personally. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm happy doing stage 20. I get enough points. And that's all that I'm, I'm really looking at. Like how many points am I getting per energy and making sure that I'm, I'm you know, taking advantage of that. The other thing to keep, out, uh, keep in mind if you want to, you could, well, you should wait until tomorrow to do the spider. 
So what I've done is I just tested a few teams. Now I did test a couple different versions. Every team I tested at stage 20 with all epics did work, but I tested a few different teams. Um, I tried one combination I really like for spider is actually, um, obviously not for this event, but I like UDK and Godseeker and Neary because UDK, even if he dies, Godseeker just revives him and UDK will always take the hit from the spider. So he's the perfect spider tank, right? So I do like that combination. I did try Godseeker and Neary in the team. Uh, Godseeker actually just did too much damage and was killing the spiders before they were doing the HP burns. So I took her out, brought in some, brought in Geomancer instead, and now you kind of see the final version of the team. There was one version that had Venomage for um, just, just trying to do more damage to the boss, but better results with uh, Geomancer and the, the, the final version of the team. I also tried running Allure. Now, Allure is not great at turn meter controlling the spider because only the first hit is guaranteed. The other two hits are random and will likely hit spiderlings. So I did try her. Didn't work, but... As, as you can see, we have a team that works. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's kind of where I'm at. I don't see a point in changing the team too much. But I do think that this summon pool event is very, very worth it. If you're not going the, for the fusion, definitely do it. If you are going for the fusion, budget accordingly. Um, I keep talking about passive energy gain. What do I mean? I mean this gain right here. In two minutes, I'm going to have nine energy. So... In a couple of, you know, over a period of time, I'm going to have my 130 energy back. I can put that 130 energy in the spider and not take a hit to my gems or anything like that. The uh, So that's kind of my, my recommendation uh, in order to do, to do that. For me personally, I do have the RSL Helper. Um, with RSL Helper, there is this button, Run Effective Resources. What that'll do is it'll actually automatically run spider for me every time I have enough energy to run spider overnight. And that keeps me from hitting that cap of 130. Now, you may not have RSL Helper. You may be a mobile player, and that advice doesn't help you. But if you do have RSL Helper, that is the reminder to say, hey, take advantage of that. So make sure that today, I know I have to make sure I finish my... Um, I want to finish my fire night right away and then do spider because I have more time later to do spider But make sure you guys finish out your artifact enhancement events This is one that can slip through the cracks sometimes So you want to make sure you're paying attention and knocking that out a couple of recommendations that I have You'll see I have gained a lot of silver. This was pretty low the other day, but I've been farming and not spending silver So I've gained up a lot of silver Something that I like to do is first I'll go through and look at some champions that I use very regularly and see, do we have a piece that is not leveled? And does leveling that piece help my account at all? Uh, this piece doesn't really need to be leveled, but I will go piece by piece, champion by champion, and see if I have any level 12 stuff. Now, this could help, right? We've got... This is more HP for Mithrala, right? So we take that to 16. We got a little bit more accuracy. That's more resistance for her. That's a great roll. I'm so glad I did that, right? Here, this is going to give me more HP. We don't, And we get a defense percent substat. Let's go. Really improving my overall Mithrala performance here again. This will just give me a little bit more HP. And then we get another substat down here. We get a flat defense. Not great, but not terrible. Don't really need to upgrade this one anymore, though, right? We have the accuracy. We have the speed. We have the HP. Could I get a defense percent substat? No, I can't because we're in an attack. We're in a weapon. So really, the only thing I could get here would be either resistance or flat attack. I'm not. That's not worth the silver because I may come across another champion that could use the, the gains more. And so this is what I like to do. This is how I start here again, right? We need defense on this champion, and they only have a level 12 shield. We're going to upgrade that. We're going to increase that. We get a little bit of crit rate. Don't care too much about that, but I'm not going to hate it because Godseeker can hit pretty hard. So if I get some extra crits, I'm happy with it. 
So this is how I like to start things. Um, even for Deacon here, this is going to give him more defense, right? More survivability. We would love that. We get some resistance. That's the same thing. Um, so once I go through a bunch of that, and I'm, you know, we'll, then I take a look at where I'm at in the, like, where, how far have I progressed in the event? So we topped off a bunch of pieces. So I go back. I take a look at the artifact enhancement event. All right. Pretty far along. And let's say that I went through everybody that matters. And I checked all of their gear. And everybody had everything to 16. Um, and there isn't anybody else that I want or need to level right now. So that's when I start saying, all right, cool. Well, let's start leveling gear for gear. And what do I mean by that? So... Let's say that I want to find an item that has crit rate, crit damage, attack percent. We have any items with this that could be leveled, huh? Um, let's see. That's an HP percent one for an HP based nuker. Not really using one, but look at this item. This item is a definite 16, right? So little bit of crit rate but on lethal that's fine because you get you get crit rate from the gear uh good crit damage good attack percent rolls and then a little bit of extra hp just for survivability i can't be mad at that that is a great great piece great roll really excited about that great investment of silver into that here we've got a resistance chest plate don't know about that here's another it's a stone skin weapon with attack crit damage crit rate this could potentially be part of a of a nuker that I have in stone skin once I get access to more accessories. Uh, not great rolls. Not terrible, though. We do get a big chunk of attack. We do have crit rate, crit damage on it, no matter what. And a little bit of resistance. Sometimes that, sometimes that can be pretty nice on a nuker, right? So I just go through and level up pieces like that. I level up the pieces I need to level up first. And then I go through and I find what's a good piece. And then I go from there. Another example of that would be like, I like to do speed and accuracy. Case in point, we just put a bunch of speed and accuracy gear on my Mordecai to make his team work, even though he's only level 50. And you can come in here and take a look and say, cool, what gear do I have that has speed and accuracy that would be good to level? Like this right here would be a great piece to level up, right? You've got... Take this to 12, see what kind of rolls we get. Boom, speed and accuracy, great rolls, absolutely great. Kind of didn't mean to press that button there, but I will take that to 16. And then we get a little bit of HP on there. This item is great for any debuffer on my account. Absolutely great. And even really good, I can see this being used on somebody like um, Allure, for example, who needs to also be able to do critical hits to get her turn meter control right so i don't need this on her but this would be a good piece for her because you get that crit rate and you get that speed and accuracy the other thing to do too is to check your boots uh you may have some really good speed boots that are just waiting to get leveled right um so for me like these ones right here the substats on this are really really bad but sometimes for relentless maybe you're just looking to have the six star boots and get relentless to work for example on my main account in relentless i run a lot of champions in relentless for hydra so like ancora is in relentless you can see here right padrig is in relentless and even my ugo on here is in relentless so those boots might be able to complete the set so make sure you're checking your boots too uh those are all the main places that i would look for now i've mentioned this briefly already but if you are looking for silver if you don't have enough silver come into the forge go to your you know your gear whatever it doesn't matter which one right and take the three to four stuff you craft this and then you sell it I've already talked about that in video, but if you craft all 10 of these, sell all 10 of them and get yourself 
a bunch of free silver. Now, why do it at levels? Why why this stuff? Because the the materials for this are not used in the big stuff, other than the bars. But you'll see that you need to use the epic and you need to use the legendary stuff. But you don't need the rare stuff. And by rare, I mean it's a it's the blue stuff, right? You don't need the blue stuff, but you do need the purple and the orange stuff, right? So the best stuff that you want to forge uses this materials but not this so you can build you can craft this and not hurt your crafting of actual stuff that you want to use craft it sell it it's a bunch of silver um so that's um where i go in and 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 get that that silver uh the other thing too is if you i don't recommend doing it during this i recommend craft forging during clan v clan but if you do forge this stuff you're going to sell most of it anyways right you're really only going to keep probably something that has crit rate crit damage or speed and accuracy i mean the gear resilience itself isn't great but you can the same thing can be applied to perception right you can come in here craft all this weak perception sell it but even if you wanted to craft your good stuff today i recommend doing it during clan v clan but if you wanted to craft your good stuff today you can do that and then sell all the bad stuff and you're going to make silver that way as well so if you are struggling for silver that's a great way to get it back you'll see if we go on the account i'm only down to 18 million and i'm pretty far in the artifact enhancement event so a uh, couple more pieces and i think i'm going to be all set i do recommend keeping an eye on this because it's very easy to go over um and i would would recommend that you guys not do that uh it's kind of a waste of not a waste of silver you do get a um you do get a ancient shard but uh i would rather if it's me i would save my silver for another artifact enhancement event and in my case i can skip one of those now it is actually my plan to do every single event my time constraints may affect that i didn't play this weekend i almost missed a bunch of them this weekend but I managed to pull it all off. Stayed up a little late last night to do it, but I did it. Um, that being said, if you if you if you have the time, do all of the events because those extra ten, ten fragments will be fragments that you can then apply towards the mod chests in the future. So keep that in mind. I will be going for all of the events so that I can potentially get mod down the line. All right, I'm going to call that a video. A little bit longer of a video. I do apologize for that, guys. But we covered a lot of information, a lot of important information. I'm very excited about the fusion. Very excited about this summon event as well. Uh, I got to say, this is the most tempting event I think I've had for spending money on. Uh, I, I, I will, I've already told myself I will never do money into the summon pool ever again. But that's it's tempting. Um, I don't recommend it. I highly do not recommend it. Without a mercy system, it is a uh, it is a money sink, complete waste. But the whales are going to be out in force, going for extra chimars. So, all right, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. We are two subscribers away from 1,200. That's a big milestone for me. Uh, very excited about that. Also, consider liking the video or leaving a comment. Give me your thoughts. How do you do fusions? Is there anything I missed? Let me know in the comments because I love to, re to, to read those, reply to them, put them in a future video and say, hey, I forgot this thing. Um, and of course, liking the video and commenting on the video helps me algorithmically and gets me more views and helps my channel grow. So I appreciate all of that support. Again, thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.